Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Elizabeth LaRue. I am the chair of Migraine Canada, and it's my pleasure to welcome you on this Sunday webinar on CGRP antibodies for migraine prevention. A few housekeeping things. Um, this webinar will be recorded. It is recorded. It will be uh, posted on our, on our YouTube channel and website. Um, it, depending on the quality, it might be re-recorded. Uh, so it might be slightly different than what uh, you're seeing. Uh, please do support us by sharing our website, uh, our Facebook if you are on social media, but also raise awareness about migraine in your network. So remember that this is a webinar on medical therapy. We do provide information and I am a neurologist specialized in headache, but we cannot provide medical advice for your specific case. So the information discussed might not apply to you and always discuss whatever medical therapy you want to try with your own healthcare provider who knows everything about your story. Also, do not miss our next webinars. We have two planned exciting ones with uh, Christy Tate, nurse practitioner, who's gonna talk to us about the story of migraine, diagnostic pitfalls, and how migraine sometimes is not well diagnosed. And then um, November 29th, Dr. Suvendrini Lena, who will talk about women, migraine, and advocacy. So today, I wanna to talk to you about different things. All right, so uh, basics about migraine prevention. Some of you might be very familiar with this, but others might not be. We'll talk about the story and the science of CGRP. Then we'll talk about those treatments, HOV, Amavig, Mgality. Do they work? And what type of side effects do they have? And then we'll talk also about the sensitive topic of cost and access and insurance coverage. So some of you might actually already be taking these treatments and that might be the part that interests you the most. The whole thing should last approximately 40 minutes and then I'll be very glad to take your questions in the chat box um, the best I can, of course, uh, in a safely manner. All right, so let's get started. So basics of migraine prevention. So this is the first uh, part. Well, maybe it will be reassuring to you if you live with migraine that first it's a common problem and many people live with migraine and have difficulty with their sleep, their work, their personal activities. They do miss occasions, they do miss work. And so in this survey done in Canada, you can see that a lot of people, a quarter of them had difficulty um, attending activities, three quarters of them know what it means to have a bad night because of a migraine, a third of them miss work, and a lot of them had to adapt their work activities because of migraine. So migraine symptoms have a significant impact on someone's life, both professional and personal. Of course, that depends on how much migraine you have. Um, if you have three migraines per year, you may have very little impact. But if you have chronic migraine and you have 20 days per month with a headache or a migraine attack, of course, your life will be significantly impacted. So this continuum of frequency is typical of migraine. And if you live with migraine, you know this, but many people do not understand that. And that's why some people will see migraine as just a headache, that's just a little nuisance, you take an Advil, but we all know if you have frequent attacks, how debilitating that can be. So when we approach migraine therapy, and this is also a basic, there's always three parts. So your doctor should address those three parts with you ideally. Um, the behavioral aspect is extremely important. It's adapting the lifestyle, managing triggers, stabilizing the brain as much as we can to avoid attacks. Treating the attack is the world of acute therapy, which we won't talk about today. And then preventive therapy is medical approaches to stabilize the brain. You may, uh, some of you might have seen our previous webinar, which is on our YouTube channel, about the causes of migraine. And I did present this ping pong theory of migraine. The ping pong theory said that migraine is a problem with the software, the chemical software of the brain. And there's two ways really to tackle frequent attacks. The first is to kind of manage the load, the burden, the triggers, whatever is triggering the attack by stabilizing your lifestyle, addressing 
other diseases, psychological and physical health, and trying to treat peripheral problems. So it's true that if you have sleep apnea or bruxism or depression, it might lead to more migraine. And by addressing that, you might get better. But then on the other side, I have lots of patients who do yoga, they eat perfectly well, they, they are masters of time management, and still they have frequent attack. And that's where medical prevention is indicated to kind of manipulate the software with medications to make your brain more resistant to migraine attack. So you have less of them, which is the ultimate goal. So our goal when we discuss prevention is to decrease the frequency and intensity of attacks to improve your quality of life. This is the goal of migraine therapy. So for example, if you live with chronic migraine, means maybe you start with you know, 10 severe days, 12 mild days, that's 22 days with a headache or a migraine attack, you may miss work and attacks might be difficult to treat. So that's a very disabled baseline. And then if you have a 50% response, and we'll go back to this 50% response concept, well, then it means you may go down to five severe days, five mild days, Maybe you don't miss work anymore and you have attacks that you can finally control with triptans or anti-inflammatories. So that's our goal. Unfortunately, so far, we do not have universal cures, one size fits all things for migraine. Usually we deal with it, we decrease the numbers. That's our goal. I want to do my little pitch on the Canadian Migraine Tracker, a useful tool, a free app you can use to actually record your attacks with a simple, mild, moderate, severe, one, two, three approach. This app is actually very handy now during COVID time because you can send your diary to your physician. My patients are doing that. They're sending their diary by email to me before my, their appointment. So I can review it as I speak on the phone with them or on telemedicine. So if you haven't tried it, you might consider it. Also remember, and we'll talk about coverage later, that now we are a bit more inclined to be precise about migraine evaluation because insurance companies might ask for precise headache counts to see if whatever they're paying for, they're covering for you, including the antibodies and Botox therapy, just to see, are you improving? So having a headache diary is medically indicated, is really practical, but now it may actually become something that may lead to coverage issues. All right, so before the CGRP antibodies arrived, what did we have for treating migraine? And some of you, if you're experienced with migraine, you probably know those names, right? So we have medications, medications that were not designed to treat migraine. They were antidepressants, anti-blood pressure or anti-hypertension, anti-seizure or anti-epileptics. How do they work? We don't necessarily know exactly, but they do all of them. Manipulate the software of your brain to make it more resistant to migraine. And all of them have been tried in studies, in clinical studies. So you might know the, the most commonly prescribed are tricyclics like amitriptyline or Elevil, nortriptyline or Aventil, just to make our lives easier. There are always two names to those things, right? So we have also blood pressure pills, propranolol or Inderol, Nadolol or Corgard. Topiramate is a very famous one as well. And then in the second line, uh, we have other options, venlafaxine, verapamil, you see the names, right? So what your doctor is gonna do usually is to say, okay, you need prevention. Um, which, is, which could work for you? Do you have high blood pressure? Very good, I'm gonna give you that drug that treats blood pressure. Do you have epilepsy? I'm gonna give you that drug. And then you start the quest of oral prevention. Why I'm saying that? It's because there's no way for us to know which one's gonna work. And it's really jumping, after, uh, jump, jumping through multiple hoops to find the one that works. Do they work? They actually do, right? So it might be, if you're listening to this webinar, it's because they didn't work for you, but they work for 50% of people. So that's the ballpark we learn when we do neurology. 
50% of people get a 50% response. That's the ballpark we get. So here I put a half a half kind of in 10 people who try, five will have some degree of response and five will not. So that's better than nothing. But what do we know? We know that if you start oral prevention after one year and you have chronic migraine, this is data on chronic migraine, well, eight over 10 people will have stopped their drug by the end of the year. What does that mean? It's not great. It means somehow that people find that they do not have benefit enough to keep the drug on. And maybe they have a little benefit, but they have side effects and they stop the drug because of side effects. So that's one of the big problems. So that means that instead of having, you know, let's say five happy campers over 10 trying an oral med, we have two happy campers who decide to keep the drug because five of them did not get better and maybe two or three of them actually had disabling side effects. So that's a problem. So we were really hoping in migraine world for something better to come along and also something that was based on science and not just serendipity. Okay, let's take a pause, little breath before we move to the next portion, the CGRP story. So what is CGRP? It's calcitonin gene related peptide. We'll just call it CGRP. This is something we all have in our bodies, okay? This is not a toxic product. This is something that plays many roles in our vascular system, in our skin system, and of course, in our brains, right? So this is something, a peptide, a protein that is normally present in the body, and it's not a bad thing. It does do things for us, right? But it does play a role in migraine. Remember, and if you want to see the other YouTube video, little pitch here about the cause of migraine. Uh, you can go on YouTube and, and look at this one. But just as a reminder, the idea is the migraine pain comes not from the eye or the neck or the temples or the jaw. We think it comes from the meninges and the arteries inside the brain. And those meninges and arteries are just filled with sensory nerves that can cause pain. And that's what we think that is the cause of the migraine pain, the key cause. Why is there pain during a migraine attack? It's because the brain, exposed to triggers, decides to sprinkle little inflammatory things like natural cayenne pepper, right? On your sensitive meninges and arteries. And that leads to inflammation. And you know inflammation when you have a sunburn or you cut yourself or you, you bruise yourself, the skin becomes very hypersensitive. It may become swollen and red. And then something that you know, doesn't hurt starts to hurt. Sounds familiar because that's exactly what happens during a migraine where your skin might actually become sensitive and your whole brain is actually sensitive to light and sound. What type of science do we have to prove that CGRP is involved in migraine? Let's say a lot. Over 20 years, we built up, I mean, not me, great researchers, they built up uh, proofs that CGRP, if you give it to a person with migraine, uh, it will trigger an attack. There's more CGRP in the blood during a migraine attack. And if you block CGRP, you block migraine. So we have a strong, we call it scientific rationale to block CGRP. How do we block CGRP? Okay. So usually we take medications that we take, they go in our blood, they go in our system, and they go and bind different receptors and, and then they exert their action on our bodies. Antibodies are just a kind of molecule and we have them naturally in our bodies. Um, they usually target uh, infections like viruses, huh, viruses or bacteria or whatever, tumors, and they activate an immune response so they, they have targets, and when they see the target, they stop the target. So now we have the capacity to create antibodies to target certain things like CGRP or its receptor. So that's how an antibody works. The antibody is nice because it does not go through the liver or the kidney, and it does not interact with other medications, which is very nice. 